Boa tarde, gente. Espero que você tenha uma ótima dia e bom te ver. Good afternoon or good evening, almost everybody. Um, good to see you again. Uh, this is your man Larry, American Brazilian. Listen, this is my second time actually making this video. I want to talk really briefly on what's happening in Florida in regards to uh, the new immigration law, SB 1718, that has been passed in the law and that will go into effect on July the 1st. Now, basically what this law is, is Governor Ron DeSantis, uh, it's, it's, it's his effort to crack down on illegal immigration in the state of Florida. A lot of people believe that Florida is a sanctuary city. Uh, to the contrary, it is not. You know, we do have people, a lot of immigration, a lot of immigrants rather, here in this state that do a whole lot of construction and they have you know specialties, you know, uh, drywall, concrete, plumbing, electricity, uh, framing, all of that, you know, it just runs the gamut. But they, we have a lot of uh, immigrants who come to this state and they make a considerable amount of money uh, in construction. I don't know about other states, but here in Florida, you can become very wealthy doing construction. Contrary to what many of us were told as kids, you know, you're gonna grow up, you're not gonna be anything but a dish digger and a construction worker. <laughs> That's changed. In any event, there are certain things uh, within this law that a lot of people, I'm sure if you've been paying attention to the news, have been very concerned about. Uh, so there's this e-verify system. So if somebody is working on your job and or working with um, uh, in a company and that company has, I think, 25 employees or less, something like that, or more, um, you have to verify that this person, uh, you have to verify their immigration status. If someone goes to the hospital and uh, they receive any type of medical treatment, they need to, uh, the doctors need to verify their immigration status. It's much like when somebody goes to the hospital and they were the victim of a crime, say a stabbing or a shooting. Well, unbeknownst to the victims, a lot of times doctors are required by law to in, to call the police officer and let them know, hey, look, we have a shooting or a stabbing victim here or a monkey or whatever. And uh, then, of course, you know, the officers show up and they investigate. Also, uh, there's not going to be any type of holy ground, no pun intended, uh, what I'm about to say, because churches are also uh, going to be in the mix. In other words, they feel like, much like the Underground Railroad, a lot of times people use churches. Uh, to get people from one place to the next. Uh, oftentimes, people in the Latino community uh, are very religious. They're connected to their their, their spirituality, uh, the God that they serve. So oftentimes, a lot of them are members of churches. So it wouldn't surprise me if Governor DeSantis sends a portion of the money, I think it's like $12 million or something like that, set aside for one purpose to be used for another purpose, uh, as well as steams, because, you know, if more most undocumented workers are in the construction area or the housekeeping or house cleaning business uh, it wouldn't surprise me if people get quote unquote new clients who just so happens to be ice agents uh, so it's a possibility i mean anything can happen a lot of people thought this was uh, more political maneuvering but he actually signed the bill and again it will go into effect uh, this coming july 1st now uh, another thing within this bill are penalties. You know, obviously deportation is the uh, main variable, which a lot of people are, are more afraid of than anything. But it's incarceration, that's a part of it. It could be a um, ten or five, five or ten thousand dollar penalty. And it's a felony. Uh, not only if you are undocumented and you are found, you know, here without any type of uh, legal documentation, but if you hire, if you're an employer and you hire an undocumented worker, you too could face a felony, a uh, third degree felony, I believe it is. Now, a lot of people feel like, well, what's gonna happen with all of these jobs? You know, uh, who's gonna take these jobs? My theory is that you can use people who are freshly uh, released from being incarcerated. You know, a lot of times they have a, a certain amount of time to acquire a job if they're on probation. And what better, a uh, way as a governor to say that you've added jobs then get people who are freshly released from the penal system. I mean, these uh, these are probably 100,000 jobs plus because again, if you live in Florida, if you've ever visited Florida, any neighborhood you go in, even on the highway, you see construction, and much like New York. Um, and a lot of times, uh, 
people, uh, well, for a while, they've been able to kind of like hide, uh, go under the radar and not be caught because for the most part, when people who are here are, are undocumented, they, they, I mean, they pay taxes, they acquire homes, cars, businesses, and they just kind of stay under the radar. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, they stay under the radar because they kind of keep things quiet. Uh, and the reason why they can acquire a, a legal form of identification is places that are in fact sanctuary cities like you know, New York, uh, Nevada, uh, Washington, D.C., Maryland, that whole tri-state region, uh, Connecticut, New Jersey, places like that. You can acquire a driver's, a valid driver's license as an undocumented citizen here in this country if you go to those places. And what a lot of people do is they go there, they get driver's license, and they come here or other places. And, you know, anytime that you're renting an apartment, renting a home, or actually uh, acquiring property, they're going to ask for a form of ID. Now, what's, it, what's cool is you can have a, let's just say, Washington, D.C. driver's license that's valid. And they're probably saying, oh, well, you're relocating. We know that you're going to change that at some point. You can just go back to where you where you got the uh, license originally and just get it renewed, which is what most people do. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting how, you know, this thing is going to play out. I, I wouldn't put it past uh, the governor here to be very, very uh, aggressive in, in apprehending or rounding up and apprehending and deporting people. Uh, a lot of people are on pins and needles. Uh, some people that I know or that I've heard of are actually uh, considering leaving Florida, which I mean, that's a, uh, and I don't want to say this to minimize the situation, but that's a, 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 a quick fix to a, a, a very difficult situation, just leave because other, again, other states that and cities that are actually uh, more friendly to the, the, the immigrant uh, uh, community, you can go there and thrive and it'd be no big deal. And some people, they just kind of want to, you know, throw their, 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 uh, bet their, their, their livelihood on chance. And unfortunately, again, I think that this guy's going to be very aggressive and it's going to result in some people being uh, forcibly removed and deported, you know, having their assets taken or liquidated, which I would think that, you know, if they, if, if, if some people do experience that, then, you know, those who are in a position to do so, that is to uh, deport them would have a heart and whatever monies uh, that are seized, if there is a, a situation where, where properties and, and, and vehicles or assets are liquidated, then they would give them those resources that way, at least if they go back or are sent to their home country, they won't have to start from scratch. But, you know, again, we'll see. I mean, there's always marriage, right? That's unpopular, but that is definitely a way. Or B1, if you have a, a, spe a specialty, uh, a, a, the type of job where you are uh, skilled at solving major problems. <laughs> Uh, but then even with that, you know, it's kind of up in the air. I actually know someone who speaks uh, six different languages and I mean, is he's degreed and, and does all things computer and IT and he still couldn't get a uh, B1 sponsor here when he visited. So he went back to his uh, country of origin and uh, you know, that happens as well. So. In any event, I just kind of wanted to put this video out here, and I'm sorry, Splice stuff is in two parts because I got a phone call while I was actually recording, and uh, this was more or less a response or uh, answer to a question. And oh yeah, I'm gonna drop a couple of links to uh, below uh, of the video of, of, of this video, and there's gonna be a video uh, also speaking a little bit more in detail as to uh, all. That, that this bill encompasses. So uh, yeah, I hope that helps. You know, if you're out there and you see see this video, uh, you who had the question, then uh, yeah, uh, it, 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 you know, it, at the time that the question was posed, it was a matter of, is it gonna pass? And now it's a matter of, it's actually passed. Now how enforceable is it gonna be? Is it gonna be aggressive, aggressively enforced, or is it gonna be moderately enforced? I personally think it's gonna be aggressively enforced because, uh, I just think that this guy has an agenda and he's going to carry the right on what's necessary. And unfortunately, a lot of people, some in the Latino community, they support the Republican uh, agenda.
agenda, which is ironic because those are the very people that um, have passed laws to get you out of here. So I'm curious as to how things are going to play out. But in any way, in any event, follow conversation my stars. It's your man Larry, America Brazil. You're saying, Ate a brave, have a And again, don't you good to see you. Talk to you guys later. I'm out.